Hello everyone, I am Rushal Rungta. Welcome to another episode of Leadership Simplified. In conversation with people who do things differently and inspire others to do the same. My guest for today is Mr. Kelvin Teo, NUS valedictorian, Harvard alumni and founder of Funding Societies Modarco, which is the largest financing platform for small businesses in Southeast Asia. The company has given more than $1.6 billion of loans since 2015 and is the first Southeast Asian company to win the Global SME Excellence Award from United Nations ITU Telecom. Welcome, Mr. Kelvin. Thank you for coming on to my show. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So let's get on to some of my burning questions. So Facebook was started by Mark Zuckerberg when he was at Harvard and you started your company while studying at Harvard as well. I'm really curious to know, is there some secret recipe that Harvard has which makes, which makes its students come up with such terrific ideas? I think comparing ourselves with, uh, with Mark is, is a pretty, uh, is a really tall, tall order. Um, I think that two things in Harvard, which has been ex- has been extremely instrumental towards our, the founding of our company, is number one. I think it's really a vision of of creating peop- uh, students who make a positive impact in societies. And and frankly, when when my co-founder Reno and I started uh, uh, went for our masters at Harvard Business School, the whole idea wasn't to start a company. Um, his idea was to go back to his family business, and my idea was to go back to private equity. Um, uh, or even my previous firm at KKR, but I think it's really the whole whole mission of trying to create a positive impact in, in, in societies that has driven us to actually start funding societies, and this is also embodied in our name, uh, funding societies. Mm. The second driver I find is really that um, I think Harvard Business School bring to, brings together amazing talents together, and allows you to also see what is possible in life. So if not because of Raynaud, I would not have started a company. If not mm. because I have amazing peers and classmates who have achieved amazing things, extraordinary things, even before uh, going to Harvard Business School, that has really made me believe that, hey, if my peers can do it, I probably can do it as well. So it's really this environment that has prompted us to start funding societies in 2015 mm. while we were still in school. Mm. It is really indeed uh, very fascinating to hear success stories coming out of these uh, Ivy League universities and I truly hope that uh, I'm able to join one of them when I grow up. So you aced your studies, got scholarships, went to an Ivy League university and started a very successful business as well. It almost sounds like a fairy tale, but I'm sure you would have your share of challenges as well. So from your experience, What tips do you have for children of my age, which can help us grow more resilient as individuals? I think... I I would would quote what Jack Ma shared. um, So in Mandarin, what what Jack Ma said was that um, 人的心胸是被委屈给成大的 In English, it means that um, the size of one's heart is really expanded by virtue of frustrations and mistakes and failures um, mm. and, and, inju- and, and, and uh, injustice in life. The reality is that as much as, as much as we want to create a fair society, the world itself is not, not the most fair of places. Um, and that is really the diversity of experience, especially failures, that has enabled one to be able to experience some of these challenges and, and take it in stride. It's also why when we, were, when we interview for talents, very a very critical questions that we always ask is that what's the biggest failures uh, you've experienced in life? Um, and it's not because, hey, and, and people who has very, very superficial failures, like, hey, not passing exams, our biggest worry is always that, hey, can they actually experience and and, and thrive in the knocks of life? So I think uh, I, I think that you are very well set up uh, by virtue of having to be exposed to people who have perhaps uh, experience some of this, and I think this drop-off uh, effect that you may that you may have from conversations like this, or even with your father or your peers, I think that could be very, would be very instrumental towards your growth. Mm-hmm. I think that was a very uh, useful point fo- point that you mentioned, and uh, I think what Jack Ma said is really true. And I'm going to try and make 
an effort to implement that for myself. To take more risk, as long as it does not impact and as long as it does not cause any irreversible damage to your future life, I think that all risk is fair is fair game. Yes, definitely. So on to my third question. I keep hearing that the skill to learn for fast, unlearn, then relearn has become very important. So what are your thoughts about this? And is this applic- applicable only for children of my age group or even for successful entrepreneurs like you? I'm not sure if I'm successful yet, uh, but we are, we are work in progress, but definitely working towards uh, being successful in you know as, an, as a founder, as an entrepreneur. But I think you have hit uh, the nail on this head, right? That it, the ability to learn fast and, and being able to relearn is ex- so extremely important, especially in an eight day and age where things are changing really quickly. So I put an example. So Raina and I started uh, funding societies while still in school in Boston. And uh, funding societies was incorporated in Singapore and we first started in Singapore so there's a 12 to 13 hours time difference depending on late daylight savings so basically we work from 8 p.m. to Boston time to about 3 4 a.m. Uh, Boston time um, so that we can be with the team as much as we can um, even though we are not physically together virtually they feel that we are in working on one team um, but what and obviously it makes it quite hard for you to be very dedicated to your studies and however it's a school whereby if you miss three classes in a course you probably will fail the course uh, outright uh, by virtue of uh, insufficient class participation, so so the art, so so you basically have to master the art of being able to learn the entire case study um, faster than the everyone everyone else. So how do we? But eventually we still did well because we realized that a lot of other students they spend hours uh, before uh, the, the day before or days before to study the case so that they can actively participate in the class, and we realized that we could probably spend the first 15, 20 minutes in the class to read the case and then participate in the second third of the class because that's when the, the deepest of insights are not being conveyed yet. So having a 20 minutes uh, read will already be sufficient for us to commit to, to, to participate and then subsequently learn uh, the rest of it in the, in, the, in the last third of the class. So that really increases the efficiency of us, of us to learn and allows us to achieve a lot more. So while people are taking hours to prepare, we didn't even prepare and we still get equal grades than, than the others. And I think this skill to learn, relearn and of course combine information across different uh, different uh, fun- functional areas is, or even industry areas is going to be extremely important and I think that's so what Elon Musk has has uh, attributed to for his success uh, across multiple industries so how can you cross fertilize insights across industries? I mean uh, that what you said was very true and in a way though I'm very happy that applies to all of us like why should only kids have to do all the learning activities but this also means that as kids we need to keep a mindset of continuously learning new things rather than just thinking about our exams. Yeah, I, in fact, I think that for the ones who have overly aced their ex, uh, exams are generally not the most successful individuals. So, so for context, I did graduate as a valedictorian from the National University of Singapore, but it's not because I had the highest grades, but I had the most all around the profiles. Mm-hmm. Very true. So on to my next question. Just before my national school exams last year, we were taught about the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And one of the elements of a growth mindset was to draw inspiration from other people's success. Did you also learn any lessons or draw inspiration from other people's achievements while setting up your business? I think definitely right. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, But I think what is particularly insightful to me was that I think number one, how can we, is that there isn't perhaps one or two persons whereby you draw inspirations constantly. In fact, like what Elon Musk mentioned, right, it is his heroes who are criticizing him of when he was actually starting uh, SpaceX. So I find that one's heroes may actually change or you may even have multiple heroes depending on the context that you are facing. Uh, I think that's number one. I think number two is also that that is also probably how you could learn the fastest. So one of the key reasons that I was very happy to have this conversation is that is that is to pay it forward because we have also been fortunate to receive advice from many others. And and to a point about uh, about ever learning, I, I recall last year I had about twelve expert calls whereby I was speaking to experts who have um, been there, done that, and solved problems that we are facing now uh, last year. So 12, 12 calls for last year, so on average one call per month. As of today, now we are at, we are at the end of February, early March. I already had five done five calls. 
because as there are so much more to learn as we scale up as a leader, as we scale up as a professional. So I think that to that extent, and these are kind of these mentors are kind of mini heroes to us as in, as as we grow in our journey. So, uh, so I think that having having uh, heroes in life, I think is important. That having ever evolving one or even multiple ones based on your needs and context is even more important. Mm-hmm. It's really good to um, hear this from you, and it really reaffirms my belief in having a growth mindset. But it proves that this is just not something written in textbooks, but it's actually a trait of uh, successful people like you. So, on to the last question: Successful leaders have the ability to juggle multiple things at the same time. That's a really, that's a really good question. Um, for so, so I think it it lies back to to individuals who have been there, done that. Frankly, whenever we start a new adventure or experience, um, it is not. I, th- I think that the challenge of smart people or people who are a bit more talented is that they will try to rationalize and figure out how to do something. But the reality is that there are a lot of things that has been solved in this world, and that uh, experience do count to a certain extent. So, so literally, before we started the company, we spoke to people who have started a company while in school, while not physically being in the home con- in the home country of of. Um, of the startup, so basically we, we were speaking to another startup who, uh, my ex-colleague who was doing his masters at Stanford and launched a startup in, in Indonesia. So basically by speaking to, to experts, to people who have been there, done it allows us to actually short circuit and accelerate our our growth growth experience, and that applies to all as, all aspects of our lives, being it happiness, with your family, or even health. But uh, I have to share this with you that uh, sometimes when I need to do several things, I just wish I could be a robot with multiple arms and uh, finish everything in a flash but that certainly isn't reality and i would follow some of your advice to achieve better results when juggling two things at the two or more things at the same time your perspective may uh, of of taking the shortest path towards destinations may change as as you age more because that's what i i always try to optimize for um, when I was uh, when I was slightly younger uh, but I also realized that over time the, the journey is probably as important as destination as well true true so with this we are done with the serious stuff so to get to know you a little better and have some fun I have prepared a set of rapid fire questions for you so you will have about 5 seconds to answer each of the questions and I will prompt you once your time is up shall we begin I was good Let's do it. Okay. Would you rather spend your money or save your money? Save. Newspaper or on- online news? Your preference. Online news. Same here. What is something they don't teach you in college that you should probably know? So many. Um, but I will start with sales. What are two things that are on your bucket list right now? Go to the North or South Pole as well mm-hmm. as list the company in New York. Your favorite social media platform? Wow. I really don't use social media as much. But by but as part of my job scope, uh, I am I, I do maintain a uh, reasonably active LinkedIn account. So I check into my Facebook account once a year, maybe two, once every two years. Mm, interesting. Elon Musk, Jack Ma, and Einstein are coming for dinner. What's on the menu? Frankly, I don't quite care what's on the menu as long as it is long. Hopefully, it's a French meal so that I have a lot more time with them. Mm, mm. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the coolest, how cool are you? <laughs> I guess it depends on perspective. Our image is probably about seven and a half. Okay. You really did well with these questions and thanks for sharing your preferences and some cool fun facts. But I have to tell you that, uh, tell you what my choice for menu for Elon Musk, Jack Ma and Einstein would be. Rocket leaves for Elon Musk, Baba Ganoush for Jack Ma and some spicy food for Einstein so that he can maintain his uh, spiky hairstyle. Explosive dishes. Yes, yes. So, uh, Mr. Kelvin, I really had fun talking to you. Thank you so much for taking time out for me on a weekend. I gained some really valuable insights speaking to you. And these will be memories that I will cherish forever. Forever. Thanks. Excuse me. Thanks for having me. Really excited about the journey that I'm embarking on. I thought you are very much ahead of the curve. And uh, all the best. Keep it up. And uh, really excited for you. And feel free to let us know if you can help you in any way. Thank you so much, Mr. Kelvin. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Cheers.